if you start your gym soon, you know, dazzle us with a new piece of equipment, you're good for our kit. All right. Hey, thank you, James. I really appreciate it. So uh, as James said, my name is Joffrey Starcher, uh, National Sales Manager with PEXA USA. Uh, I'll get into who PEXA is, what we are. Uh, this is my technical muscle, which I always need because I'm a lowly sales guy. I'm, I'm not the most uh, technical person in the world. So this is uh, Jimmy Singh. Uh, Jimmy's been uh, a tech with us for uh, about a year and a half now, but uh, he's worked on everything from diesel to, uh, to automobiles, uh, pretty much anything out there. And he, he does a great job with our customers because uh, the world of diagnostics is ever evolving. And uh, with Texa, uh, you know, as you'll see in a little bit, we, 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 we kind of get into everything uh, out there. Uh, a little bit of background on myself. Uh, I was in the natural gas business for about 15 years in Pittsburgh, uh, uh, mostly on the distribution side, not the transportation. I uh, did that for about 15 years. Uh, my wife works for Bear Fire Pharmaceuticals. She did at the time, had an ex expat assignment in Germany. So I moved to Berlin with my kids for, uh, for a couple years in Germany. And uh, after that, Moving back to New Jersey, got into aftermarket automotive. Uh, I worked with Advanced Auto Parts as a commercial manager for a while. And uh, one of the products that uh, one of my customers uh, brought to me, it was the Department of Public Works, looking for ways to diagnose all kinds of different vehicles, uh, brought, me, uh, brought me into the, the name of Texa. Uh, which I had no idea what Texas was, who they are, what they do at the time. Found out I had access to the product as a supplier, got somebody out, and uh, you know, kind of the rest is history. You know, we, we had a Texas tool out. We were looking at some John Deere tractors. We were looking at uh, some heavy duty international trucks and freight liners. And when I saw the way diesel technicians' eyes light up when they, when they see how our software works and how it pulls fault codes, how it displays the information, how deep in diagnostics it can go, um, I was just ultimately impressed. And uh, like wildfire, uh, you know, word of mouth with what Texas could do in New Jersey anyway, uh, kind of kind of just. Uh, you know, sprung board uh, a, a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different sales, and then it, then an opportunity came about, which with Texas USA being located in New Jersey, uh, for me to have an opportunity to grow their distribution in the U.S. Uh, and, and I jumped on that job. Uh, I really believed in the product. I saw I saw the success it has and, and, and how the software works, and uh, I just said I wanted to be a part of that. So. Uh, uh, just wanted to give you a little background on how I got here, who I am. Uh, super excited that, uh, that we, James sought us out to be here. I, I think what this group does is so unique uh, to the world. Uh, it's safety driven, uh, it's process driven, uh, uh, the attention to detail that, that you all go through, um, uh, utmost respect. Uh, I definitely know that that I am not the smartest person in this room right now, for sure. <laughs> so uh, again, I appreciate what you guys do. So without further ado, we'll, we'll get into kind of kind of what James has brought us here to talk a little bit about uh, our air to sand ozone generator. Uh, next slide here is, is kind of, we'll talk about the Texas group real quick, who we are. I uh, won't spend a ton of time on that. We'll go through the Texas products, everything we do. Uh, we'll, we'll focus on the air to sand. Uh, marine diagnostics, which, which could add value to what you do. Uh, we could demo the air to sand if you need to. Uh, I don't know if we'll have time, to, time for that, but we did bring the product here. And certainly this is your day, your forum. So any questions that, that we can answer while we're here. And I promise you, uh, if I don't know the answers, we will get you the answers right away. Uh, I'm not here to give uh, give information to people that, uh, that I don't necessarily know right away. And in the world, world of diagnostics, uh, you can get a lot of trouble that way. So, uh, so we wanna make sure we're giving anybody accurate information. So if I don't have the answer today, you will get the right answer down the road. So Texa, who we are, we're, we're an Italian company based out of uh, Treviso, Italy, which is uh, a couple clicks northwest of uh, Venice, Italy. 
So if you were going to, to, to Texas headquarters, you'd be uh, flying into Venice. Founded in 1992 by some, uh, some car dealers, uh, and that's kind of how multi-brand diagnostics were born. For example, uh, you know, a guy being a Honda dealer in the U.S. Uh, can only work with, with Honda software, can only work on Honda cars when it comes to fully diagnostics. Uh, and that was in the 90s, that's kind of how things were. This guy was like, well, what if I have a Subaru coming in or a, a Suzuki or a Ford or a GM car? I, I want to be able to do all that work in-house, plug in, find out what's going on so that I don't have to waste time, send it to another dealer and pay more money to get that outsourced and diagnostic. So back in the early 90s, uh, this car dealer in, in Italy, uh, born, uh, he's the one that founded uh, multi-brand diagnostics. And uh, that's kind of where Texas is today. We've been doing it as long as ECMs have been out there uh, on, on multiple different things, which we'll get into. Uh, we have a little less than a thousand employees. Uh, we have uh, global branches in Spain, UK, Germany, France, Poland, Russia, uh, Japan, Brazil, and the US. Uh, we have distribution everywhere over the world in, in some form of, of fashion. Uh, Texas USA, we're not too far away. We're, we're up in uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey. So Jimmy and I were able to drive down here this morning. It was a nice little trip uh, down the turnpike. There's just a picture of the headquarters in Treviso of Texas. I won't spend a lot of time on that, but you guys will all have a copy of this presentation. Uh, so everything wanted, um, you'll have in a flash drive. In-house attitude. One thing Texa um, is really big in is uh, is engineering, manufacturing, and making anything, everything in-house. So all of what we design, the Air Two Sand, all of our di diagnostic diagnostics is coded, written, engineered in-house in Treviso. Uh, we're not outsourcing any of that. Some components, but everything is built, engineered, coded in Italy. A little uh, breakdown of where the some of the branches are and where we have coverage. Uh, you guys are all about quality, safety, saving lives. So uh, there's some of the certifications that that uh, Texas has obtained. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with a lot of those very strict certifications in, in Europe, Germany, and the U.S. And we also have a electro a electrostatic protected area certification, which uh, uh, you know is very important uh, with with uh, electronics pr production, which I'm sure you're you're familiar with that type of certification. So anything we work with, we have uh, we have met those standards. Some of the OEM partners we work with. Uh, it, it, it ranges all over the place. You see Ducati on that list. Uh, uh, Ducati, uh, we actually write the software for them. Uh, Navistar, we have a partnership with International and Navistar. They're, uh, they're doing a lot with electric vehicles now. They're not long, no longer doing diesel and combustion. So uh, we, are, we, we are helping them with uh, diagnostic tools there. Uh, Piston Bully, which is Caspor, which is a German company. They make the big snow, snow cats uh, that you see on the mountains at, at, in the ski slopes. Uh, we're their preferred diagnostic tool. Um, Mercedes-Benz. Uh, one of the things we do with Mercedes is they're the first kind of vehicle manufacturer that is going to a CO2 AC recovery system. And we actually make their CO2 machine. So... Uh, uh, one of the things, aside from Air2 SAN and full diagnostic software, we, we do a lot in automotive equipment. Uh, we're one of uh, uh, the global leaders in AC recovery systems. Although we are just now bringing that to the U.S. market. We don't have it in the U.S. market, but all over the world we're saying it, selling it, AC recovery machines. That's one of the projects we're, we're actually working right now. So we do have certification for... 134 gas in the U.S. And, and we will have 1234 and all the new gases and dual gas. Uh, we're expecting that early next year. So, which is a good thing with supply, supply chain issues right now. Uh, people are having trouble getting all kinds of components and parts. And believe it or not, AC recovery machines is one of those things. So the sooner we can get stuff over here, uh, the, the sooner we can help a lot of people. 
fleets and large customers. Uh, you know, some of the, 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 this is kind of our home because we, we deal with such diverse things from, from passenger cars all the way to cranes, uh, forklifts, telehandlers, uh, industrial engines, what, what have you, bikes, boats, uh, which is obviously why we're, why we're here. Some of our customers, New York City Department of Transportation, they use a ton of our units uh, on all their different equipment. South Carolina DOT, a lot of governments, uh, rental companies with uh, all types of different equipment, uh, Sunbelt, United Rentals, you see those all across the country, they're, they're using our diagnostic tools. So anybody that has a diverse, uh, diverse fleet with all types of different types of systems, you know, Texa, Texa is a good product for you. And everything we do is, uh, is software based. It's not necessarily hardware. We do make some hardware. Um, obviously we have BCI devices. Jimmy has that there. Uh, one that BCI there is, is for boats and bikes. Uh, we also have a high-end military grade tablet for, uh, that, ship that has our software that you get, that's engineered and made in Italy. Uh, it's a 12, 12 inch tablet, uh, Gorilla Glass, uh, pretty much we have dealers that walk into shops and just throw it on the floor and then pick it up and plug into things because they want to prove to people how, how, uh, how strong it is. So, uh, it's a good device. It's a good device. However, again, you don't, you don't have to have this on that piece of hardware. Uh, the good thing about Texas, is you, and we'll get into this a little later, is you can kind of customize whatever your diagnostic solution is because it is software based. We have a lot of mobile technicians and things that have laptops that want to want to streamline stuff into OEMs. So they'll download our software software to a laptop and use it with and, and use use it with other things that they're doing on a daily basis. So that's the beauty of Texas. We're not saying, hey, this this is what we make. This is how you have to take the diagnostics. You can kind of build whatever you want, and that comes with vehicle coverage and everything too. Whether you're dealing with personal watercraft, large boats, inboards, outboards. We, we, we have customized packages that we can put together for anybody. As we talked about a little earlier, uh, <clears throat> Texas Group, uh, we do a lot of different things. Uh, you, have, you see some product there. ADOS, Advanced Driver Assistance for people that uh, aren't, aren't in the, uh, the vehicle world with, uh, with wheels. Um, of course, James and I were talking earlier, autonomous boats uh, seems to be already happening, right? <clears throat> and uh, we're eventually going to have more, <clears throat> more autonomous vehicles on the road. But the first step of this is advanced driver assistance. So we make equipment that can do full calibrations um, of all the sensors, radars, cameras. Uh, you, uh, you need targets. If you see that little device here in the middle, uh, that is actually, we're one of the first ones in the US to bring a, a, a 75 inch projection screen that once, uh, once you scan the vehicle, OEM size targets will show up on this so you don't have to manually change the targets. And then the cameras will shoot to those targets and it'll calibrate your sensors back to OEM specs. So this is good for collision shots and things like that, windshield guys whatever, but we, we, we have those systems. AC recovery, well, there's one of our BCI devices. We do remote drive diagnostics with trucks. We're actually one of the only companies where you can uh, <clears throat> force, force a regen, regen from a remote location. So if you have a diesel truck that's in limp mode down in Florida, and you have a technician here with one of these systems, you can communicate with this device and force a regen from five states away anywhere in the country. So we have some pretty cool, uh, unique things that we do, aside from air to sand and, and full diagnostics. Multiple scanners, because we have different packages for anybody. So as Jimmy showed you, we have the, for the boat industry, the, you know, all you need is this lightweight, waterproof uh, BCI. That'll work for any uh, motorcycle or boats, ATVs, UTVs. Um, it's, a, it's got full bi-directional capabilities. So if you were doing diagnostics on boats, all you would need is that little guy there. Uh, we do have a large VCI over here on the right, 
which gives gives uh, somebody the capability to do off highway equipment, construction equipment, cars, whatever, everything we offer, all from one VCI. Uh, certain manufacturers require uh, proprietary cables that you have to use to connect the vehicles. So you would need to have additional cables for like Dusan or uh, for if we're talking about Cummins or what have you, you would have to have this proprietary cable to use with that VCI. Uh, this is also a smaller VCI that can do bikes or cars. It's not necessarily something you, you all would be using very often, but just shows you the different customizations and, and things that we have. And we talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, it, it, we do have the hardware. Uh, we have the uh, Exony Nemo tablet that Jimmy was showing you earlier as well as the ability to just purchase software and download it to whatever you want to use. It just has to be a very good Windows-based tablet. Uh, you don't want to go cheap. Our software is, you know, uh, it takes a lot of RAM and memory to use. So, so you don't want to put it on, on a tablet that doesn't have a lot of space on it. What are your, what are your recommendations? We have, uh, we have minimum specs that I did not put on this presentation but we can definitely get those to you. So usually, um, usually I would say, um, he's probably better. I would say maybe like um, Intel Core i5 or Intel Core i7, something something newer. Um, obviously I would recommend have to have Bluetooth, um, have to have at least more than one uh, USB connection to be able to hook up, um, to do updates, to be able to use the passer if you ever wanted to, but pretty much any newer computer that's, you know, capable of we'll be able to take our software and be able to make it work. Yeah, and I think uh, I think I probably should have included that on the presentation. So we'll make sure we get you that information because it's it's important to know that. You know, yeah, I'm sure you guys have your certain laptop that you got all your information on. You need to know what the minimum specs are if if you wanted to incorporate this. All right, so uh, Air Two Sand. The main reason, I, next one, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, so there are two sand. Um, we like this. This was manufactured. Uh, we came out with this two years ago in the middle of COVID. Uh, there has been un uh, university testing in Italy uh, that certifies this against uh, SARS and, and COVID. So that's, that's the main reason this came out. But it's a highly engineered machine. And there, it's, it's unique because there's not really anybody that if there's a lot of ozone generators out there on the market but none that kind of work like this uh, it's a fully automated process two filters uh, one for dust one for recovery of the o2 uh, there's several microprocessors and sensors so that uh, it's measuring density and volume uh, and at the end of the process what makes this completely unique is it converts the uh, the O3 back into O2 to make the room safe. So that's going to save you time and energy. Uh, if, if you're using this on multiple rooms and there's a certain amount of time that it's hitting that, that the density to, to, uh, to clean and sanitize the room to wherever you want it, you don't have to wait it until the room clears out or airs out to go back in. This has already converted it back to O2, certified as a safety so that you're not breathing additional ozone that might still be in the air. Um, every other ozone generator out there just kind of blows, blows ozone. And there's no timer, you kind of have to do it, you know, kind of, kind of see what you're doing with yourself. So this one, again, with microprocessors and sensors, it's, it's, it's regular, and we're, and we're gonna go through the process. And there is also um, an app that Jimmy's showing here that you can kind of manage this, walk away, completely autonomous. It'll show you where you're at, what's, what phase, there's three phases. And uh, it'll also tell you when you're complete. So if you're on a thousand foot boat, which I guess you guys are on some of those from time to time, you could be clear on the other end of the boat and you would know when this is done in a certain section where you were using this device. So and a lot of this, guys, will be a little repetitive. Um, I, I, 
I like the way the phases are broken down here, but then I also have some more graphics later that you can look at. And as you go back and look at this after I leave, you'll kind of <laughs> look at it and see what makes sense to you. Um, but what we talked about here is, is, is obviously in the advanced technology of, of how this ozone generator is different. The like I said, the, the other ones on the market, they're just going to blow ozone. They could potentially damage fabric, materials. You're not going to know when it's safe to go back into the room. This one's going to be able to, to sense everything, make sure that the, the, the right amount of uh, volume of ozone has filled the room, and it's going to shut off when it's saturated to the right point so that it's not going to damage anything inside the room. So phase one, air to sand produces the exact amount of O3 to sanitize the cabin or vehicle thanks to a sensor that determines the air saturation. Phase two, when the generator has produced the right amount of the ozone, the reverse process begins. The machine then converts the O3 back to O2 to guarantee operator safety. The whole process is controlled and monitored with an app on your phone. And here goes into a little more detail of all the phases. So again, it's repetition, but I wanted to at least show you some, uh, a couple of different angles. So in, in, right here, it's, it's showing you that the, uh, the temperature and air, air humidity sensors, they calculate and quickly reach the ideal amount of ozone in, in the environment. Avoiding excess gases that could damage the vehicle or any other materials or objects in the room. Phase two, during this phase, this is where the, uh, the sensors keep the amount of ozone stable for the required amount of time and proper sat sanitization of the environment. So there's four phases and I, I have them broken down here for you. Uh, there's an automatic, automatic phase and, and and when you go through the app, it, it allows you to choose what size room, the volume in cubic feet, and then the duration in minutes that it needs to be, that, that you're going to need to, to do this, this function properly, to use that function properly. So we have automatic, which is a, it, which is a light sanitization. It's not specifically doing these things. It's just a light disinfectant. If you want to specifically kill viruses in COVID-19, you need to choose this function, all right? Now, this function will also kill odors as well because ozone will do that. Uh, same with molds and fungus and things of that nature. Um, it's a different process. And it, it, minutes are similar, but the, the saturation, saturation of ozone and density is different based on which, which of these options you're choosing. So again, I wanted you all to have that there. It's a nice chart to have. And uh, again, the app walks you through everything pretty easily. If you want to, after this presentation, you know, Jimmy can show you how, to walk, how the app works as a walkthrough. Um, if not, we can always do that at a later date. And it, please interrupt me if, if you want to have, if you have questions, I'm used to being interrupted all the time, so no worries. You can always handle those questions. Phase three. Okay, so at the end of the sanitation, which makes this unique and what we talked about again, is the reconversion process. So I, I, I think it's I think it's the best function of this unit is making sure that it's safe to go back in the environment, that you don't have to aerate the, the room or wherever you're at. And uh, which means as soon as that time hits, you can go in there, you know it's safe, and you can do what you need to do in the rest of that in that in that area. I think it's a huge time saver. And kind of, this shows you what the reconversion chart on the app looks like. So this this is exactly what you would see in the app, starting from phase one to phase two to phase three. So e each part of this you're gonna see through the whole process, no matter where you're at, whether you're on the other end of the ship or not. So it's a nice process, step-by-step, step, taking you through knowing exactly where you're at, because time is the essence for all you. 
you have so many things that you have to look at on uh, on these ships, you can't waste two or three minutes for sure. Again, here's the, the dedicated app. You can just download it to Android, uh, any Apple app, app store. It's a free app. Uh, it's part of the process. Uh, but there is also a small little remote control. I don't know if you have that. Yeah, Jimmy. I think I should. Because if you prefer to do something manual, uh, comes with it. There's a battery that's already in it. If you didn't want to download an app, don't have your phone on you. You get like a little remote, it syncs to here. Pretty much you can just start it, click it once for a small room, click it twice for a bigger room, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but with the app, once you have it on your phone, what's good is you can set what type of uh, environment you're in, whether you're in a small car, large office room, you just basically click next, click next, and it'll tell you, okay, it's gonna be 36 minutes and you don't even have to look at it. Say if there's like a little window in the room, you don't even have to go into the room there's a little light on the back. There's uh, different colors that it comes out to, yellow, green, red, blue, all the different phases. So even if you didn't have your phone on you, but you set it up with your phone, there's a light in the back. It'll tell you pretty much the process, how much longer there's left. But with the phone, obviously you can see it in real time, see how much longer you got left over and you can monitor it. Yep. Yeah, and as you see the units, uh, pretty easy to carry around, to pick it up. It's almost no bigger than a lunch box, not too heavy. Uh, there's a 12 volt connector cable if you need to get power from inside the inside the room. But there's also uh, you can also plug it in uh, through a regular electric outlet. Like yeah, we, we do offer a, um, a wall outlet power kit where if it was something that's not on a boat, something that's not on a vehicle or a truck, that if you didn't have a cigarette lighter available. We do offer a uh, 110 volt power kit. So if you wanted to do like office rooms, small buildings, something like that, like a room like this size, you, you'd be able to do that. We, we do offer the power kit. Yeah, in the, in the hotel world, uh, you know, there's a decent amount of hotel chains that are using this unit to, to go from room to room to do some sanitation in the world of, of COVID. Uh, that was one of the more popular uh, uses for this when it was first uh, manufactured and came out. So, so that, uh, that makes it a little easier plugging it in that way. From outlet to outlet. So that's pretty much uh, all I wanted to go through on the Air 2 Sand. You guys are going to your flash drive. You're going to have a lot of how-to videos. You're going to have, you're going to have this PowerPoint presentation. You're going to have specific product brochures as well as what you have there. Uh, before I go on to do a little, talk a little more about you know, what we do with marine diagnostics. Uh, is, is there any specific questions anybody in this room has? Sure, Dan. How much? <laughs> Good point. It's uh, it's nine hundred fifty dollars. So probably most of the things you're going to see in the market in that world are probably around five hundred to six hundred dollars. Uh, like I said, this one's engineered a little different, so it, it's a it's a nine hundred fifty dollars tool. And um, I just want to interrupt you. And, and most of those units that you see that are a little bit less expensive, 300, 400, 500, 600 dollar range, even they they use like a, a juice, like a liquid that you would have to put into the machine to be able to clear all the mold out, clear all the um, viruses, bacteria, funny smells. So with this one, there's there's no liquids or anything like that. You don't have to buy anything separate or anything like that. It comes pretty much ready to use out of the box um, within you know long periods of time if you're using it constantly there is filters that you would need to change out but that's only you know under high use the filters go into here once for dust what is considered high use um i guess if you would use it daily it all depends you'll be able to see it through the little window and you'll be able to physically see like okay it's it's getting dirty it'll you know depending time, on use every time you use it it's going to give you a, a little update of where your filter saturation is. Cool. And it's all based on volume, not, the, not, not hours or minutes. So the more, like, like if you're doing larger rooms versus more larger rooms versus smaller rooms, you're going to have to change the filters quicker. And the filters are like $31. It could, they come in a package. Um, so you'll get an update on that every time. And, and to the point about cost for this group, uh, you know, 
certain groups, associations, you know, there's some, it, it, you know, if there's a lot of interest throughout this association, I'm sure we could work on some type of deal or discount for anybody involved as International Institute of Marine Surveyors. I'm sure we could help a little bit with that. Is it ignition protected? What's that, I'm sorry? Is it ignition protected? Ignition? I don't know the answer to that, James. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. You're, uh, uh, you're 110 volt in the plug in, right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to say it's not. It's, yeah, I, I don't believe the word. You, you're talking about like um, electrostatic discharge protection. Um, the unit, yeah, because the unit's just a normal, you know, power wire that you would connect into, or if you get the, the power wire kit, it would just connect to the side. It's pretty much just like a normal, like a laptop power, power adapter or similar. Yeah. And everything's concealed inside, but, but that's a great question. We'll, we'll get you the answer. Is it rated that. for all atmospheric contaminants, like? Asbestos abatement or the tangle About asbestos, I've never been asked that, so I don't know. Uh, there's there's all, all kinds of bacteria, SARS, viruses, but asbestos and things like that, will we clear that and sanitize that? My, my first guess is probably no, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to find out for you. you know? I, I think that's a little bit of a different animal there. You know, and all the molds and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been tested for that. Viruses and molds. It's very good one. Probably not, but it's not supposed to get rid of particulates. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It, it, exactly. It, exactly. So I guess asbestos would be more of a particular. I I doubt it's going to go. Yeah. It's only twenty twelve percent. I would think so. Yeah. yeah I would think so. so you probably answered the question, but I'm still I'm still going to ask you. If asbestos types of things could be actually that that actually might damage it if you're in a room that's highly I don't know because when you're reconvert converting through that it would be interesting to know that so never thought of that because okay. I don't know if it's been used in a in an environment I'll have to check with the product manager in Italy to see if, if, if it's been an environment with a lot of particulates in the air you know. So that's that's a, that's a fantastic question, which we'll get back to. What's the cubic feet of this thing? Cubic feet? What's that? I'm sorry. Cubic feet. Cubic feet. If you it go was, back, yeah, I think it was back on the. Right? Yeah, it's 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 not for huge areas. So if you go to my chart here, the largest area would be about four thousand two hundred forty cubic feet. Or no, yeah, cubic feet. Cubic feet. So maybe the basement of a, of a house, okay. you know? Uh, and I don't think, and, and I asked this, I, I've been asked this question before, you know, if you are in a bigger room, you can't just put four or five of these in there and have them operate at the same time, same, uh, at the same time because they're all based on sensors. So if they're, if one of the units is gonna take, take ozone from the, it's just not gonna be able to measure everything and it work correctly in that environment. You would have to use the same unit multiple times in a big room and kind of just place it in different areas. So it'd be difficult to do that. It's better in contained, a contained environment. That's actually what it was designed and engineered for. Could you upscale version of that for a larger application here? Right now we don't. Um, if there was a demand for it, you know, that's that's one thing about Texas, we're not too big that we couldn't entertain coming up with, with a solution like that. And, and I tell people that for diagnostics as well. You know, if there's a specific type of diagnostic functionality that you want built for what you do, because, you know, there's unique people all over the world and, and you all are especially unique. Um, so my difference? Yeah. This room, my campus room, is 40 by 50 times mm -hmm. nine. Right. That gets you to 4,400 square feet. It's 101 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, so a room this size is is about perfect. It's about perfect. Now, what? in the vessels that you're in, is there multiple spaces about this size where that could work effectively, or?
but yeah, you'll have you'll have those conversion charts too. So that that's why I put that chart on there. I thought that was going to be really important for everybody to be able to see that. Any more questions on the Air Two San uh, that if we don't know the answers, we can get back to them. Some good ones already. Is yeah. there such a thing as too much humidity? Well, that's a great question because in this, uh, you know, in the phase one, there's the part of the the, the sensors they, they measure the temperature and air humidity. So yes, to, to do to for this to operate correctly, it's measuring humidity humidity and temperature. Phase, phase two is actually be in the area. Right? No, not phase two, because that's, oh, that's when it's stabilizing the right amount of density of ozone to do what you want it to do, whether it's mold, fungus. But while it's converting it back, always good? Theory, no, in theory, you need to wait till the conversion, reconversion process is done. That's, that's when the safety certification, and, and then you can even click a report. Yeah, there, there's a report that prints out that says it's been certified for safety, but that does not happen until the third third reconversion has happened. And, and also on on the app, if you're um if you're in the area, your your phone will will beep and and you know buzz. It'll let you know which step of the process it is. Once it is safe to enter the room, it'll tell you. Plus, there's also like I was saying, the light in the back. It'll go from blue meaning in progress to green, green meaning ready. So then you can enter the room, unplug it, and you know check if you need to check anything else. If there's still a smell, then you can run it again if you need it. Where in, in all the other stuff on the market, you're gonna have to kind of just use your best guesstimate or aerate the room or, you know, in some of the places you guys are operating, there might not even be a way to aerate a room, I, I, I would think. So with this, it's, it, it's protecting you. The certification is only good for the time of threat, correct? Yeah, it, it would, it obviously that certification just shows that hey, this room on this date at this time that, that it was performed, yeah, that it was performed. Same thing about air conditioning, yeah, that it's going to run the same stuff. Yeah, this is infiltration and it doesn't get into the AC system. It's just going to sanitize it there, what, what was there. But if your system is already contaminated, then it's just going to run stuff back, back to the room. Do, uh, mold out of bedding and stuff like that? If it's in the room, yeah. I mean, it, it, it should, it, it, ozone should be able to kill kill all that. I mean, I'll, I'll find out for sure whether it's embedding or we're on a counter space, but I think all those areas would, would work the same. What about head yeah. Oh, I know for a fact that my boat, when I bought it, that's how I, I, that's why I'm listening to this, I about passed out because I had an ozone generator from the bill toes area, but the person I bought from had in there and there was no smell in that compartment after that thing ran. And that will work for I don't know how for how long. Yeah. Well basically it's a like a like a mold based thing or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I, I think the way ozone works is you know once it meets meets that saturation point and if it if it's touching it whether it's on fabric or a hard counter or probably inside the nozzle, I mean, it's gonna kill it. It's gonna kill it. Set it up in front of the Well, it's interesting with, with when you run it through a vehicle, right, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. We circulate the air, right? Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's circulating through the vehicle. Yep. Rooms are different. Rooms are different. You're just using it in a room. Yeah, like so for a car, there's no way to really take the AC system out of the car, take the evaporator, the condenser out. But what it'll do if you're using it on a vehicle or like a heavy duty truck, it'll tell you at what stage it recommends to uh, turn it on, set it for recirculation. And while the air is circulating inside, 
then this is creating the ozone that's actually going to deodorize and um, sanitize the the AC system inside the ductwork that you couldn't you know get a cleaning tool or anything like that in. Yeah, but for uh, for a, for a cabin environment or a room environment, I don't think you could tie it into something as sophisticated AC system like that. Well, for it being a car AC, you have a cabin filter. Is it going to clean the ductwork as well? Yeah, it'll, it'll sanitize that. So for like a like a large room like this, it depends on how many um, how many cycles of uh, of times it'll uh, recirculate the air, how many minutes it takes. Because it, it runs for a certain amount of time, depending on the room that you you know put it into. But if you have a, a large room and it takes, you know, say if it's a small air conditioning system and it takes like 25 minutes to recycle all the air in the room, that might not be a big enough of an air system to be able to recirculate everything while the machine is running. So I guess that would also depend on how large the AC system is. And so back to a boat, mm -hmm. it's in the cabin mm -hmm. and the air conditioning. Yeah. That's what will clean the air up. Yeah, if, if it's if it's in like say like a cabin inside of a room, in a in a boat, then yeah, it can. Okay. But like a, a large room depends. Yeah. Correct. 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 Although I I would think, and I'll, I'll have to find the answer to that. Mm -hmm. If if it's in a sealed system, I think it'll operate better in a in a sealed environment where there's not open air coming in. Yeah. 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 I, I think you're gonna get. And the sensors are going to work that much better when it's sealed, even if you if your doors are sealed shut, you know, things of that nature, you're going to get more accuracy. Sure. Yeah. All right, great question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah sure. Jim. What does the want, want, want requirement? What wattage requirement? Um, I think the believe the system runs on 12 volt system because there's no because there's no adapter. You're gonna get 12 volts out of a car plug. Um, the power inverter for a room, I believe it also it just goes from 110 uh, down to 12 volts. How many watts you can run? Hmm? 1200 watts. 1200 watts. Honestly, it might. Yeah, honestly, I haven't read it, but I can read it. I never checked the wattage for that. My eyes are horrible. I wouldn't be able to. See um, it says 12 volts, five amps. So. I guess you could convert it out. I don't have my calculator with me to do my electrical conversion. That's just right. And, and one, just on 12 volts. So yeah, 12 volts. So it's always running on 12 volts. Mm -hmm. Plug it in one tenth, convert it in one Yeah, one. like that little, uh, that little brick switch, in between. Switch, yeah. yeah, there's a voltage converter in that. Right. Yep. That's a good question. And I, I mean, we can get you a copy of the specs and, the, and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right, right. Anybody else? And, and, and again, this conversation doesn't have to end now. You all have my card. And, and if I need to dig into some more stuff for you, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go to the, the folks over in Italy if we have to and, and get, you, get you all the answers you need. But, uh, Hey, if, if this can help you do your job a little better, potentially save lives, I, I know, I know every time, you know, I, I know I don't go on cruises that often, but I know a lot of times with cruises now, it just seems like viruses are going through, through these boats and these contained systems so fast that people are getting sick. So, uh, you know, and I'm sort of on commercial com commercial liners. It's the same thing. Whether whether they're all on freight or if there's a crew on board, things can pass quickly. So uh, so if this can provide a solution, uh, you know, we're, we're all for that for sure. And I want to work with you folks on that. All right. So uh, I'll just go over a little bit of diagnostics, which is. <laughs> Obviously, what we've done for years uh, that, that we've talked about a little bit. Uh, Jimmy, you can go go to the next page. Right sure. here, you see kind of the the uh, the tablet and the VCI that Jimmy had as they're showing everybody. You can all look at it, look at it. You can even go through the software a little bit if you have time. I know you you guys got a busy schedule, so uh, so you might not have time to go through the software. 
but we've done this for over 10 years. When, when it comes to marine diagnostics, uh, a lot of people have basically just used OEM software for, for a lot of years. Uh, there wasn't a lot of multi-brand stuff out. We were one of the first companies to do it. So, uh, so we, we've been doing it as long as anybody. And when we continue to get better, we're adding things on a daily basis. And like I said, we're, we work with OEMs, we work with different groups, associations. So if there's something potentially that, that isn't in our product that uh, fits exactly what you all do, doesn't mean that down the road we couldn't customize something for, for a large group of marine surveyors. It could be. I mean, but maybe one of our basic software programs cover, it, it, you need all that coverage. You need all the different things that we do. Uh, so maybe it's good as it is. Uh, but those are the discussions we can have on a daily basis. But again, when it comes to what we do, we write our own software. Customization is, is always something I would consider with groups of people. Uh, so what we do is we cover inboards, outboards, personal watercrafts, industrial engines, generators. Uh, we can read and clear the DTC codes. Uh, there's tons of live parameters. Uh, one thing for technicians on all of our environments, whether it's a car or a bike or, or anything, is live recorded dive, drive tests. So, so what you can do is you can use our software, set the BCI in record mode, and do eight hours of, uh, of driving the vehicle to try to duplicate an issue that you see. Uh, so that helps with cars, you know, with boats too. You can take that boat out for four or eight hours, come back and review the parameters that where you think there's an issue and see if you can find out exactly, pinpoint when this is happening and why. So really cool feature with our software. Uh, we can do a lot of bi-directional adjustments, reset values, maintenance resets. Uh, I'll show you some of the uh, screenshots of uh, wiring diagrams. We have some, our wiring di diagrams, sometimes people say are better than the OEs. Uh, we have a lot of technical data sheets out there. Uh, you know, the, you know, global web solutions, things that, that, that you can pull up within our software that are going to point you how to repair certain faults that may be common out there. So if there's a common thing with Merck Cruiser that somebody found a solution for and, and uh, I'm from West Virginia, somebody, uh, you know, tugging a boat down the Ohio River, maybe that same solution could help somebody in, uh, in the UK. Who knows? Same fault code, same engine. And uh, we try to gather all that data and keep it in our software so that uh, when certain fault codes come up, you have access to that information. Uh, again, we talk about the customization, which, which uh, we, can, we can talk about with any uh, group or association. Jimmy, can you get to the next, uh, next one here? Yep. So here's a couple print screens uh, or screenshots of, of things that, that, that what our software looks like. It's a Windows-based software, so it'll work on any Windows tablet. Uh, what you hear, see here is, is parameters battery voltage, atmospheric pressure. Um, here's a screenshot with uh, a maintenance reset and a throttle uh, calibration, I believe. So it has a step-by-step -step process for that. Next page there, see Jimmy. Yep. Here's some of those wiring diagrams we, we talked about. Here's a Volvo Penta. And this is a Honda Marine. Uh, what you'll see here is uh, it shows the flow of the current current between the component components, which is pretty cool. Interactive wiring diagrams. You can actually click on the component and uh, see pictures of them, and then that that's where you can actually pull some of the technical data on how to how to repair and replace those components in the software. So you don't even have to be connected online. I'm sure in some of these big places you're at, uh, you might not, it might be trouble getting some Wi-Fi where you're at. So this tool will, will operate. If it's in the software, you don't need to be connected to Wi-Fi. And that's for it to, to scan, do whatever you need to do. Uh, 
Uh, again, there's some some technical sheets. Uh, next next one, if you get a chance, Jim. Some more technical sheets here, uh, showing different things of what you can and cannot do. We talked about nominal values and guided diagnosis. Uh, that's available. Just giving you an idea of what things look like. And then here's uh, here's our software coverage, and this is expanded daily. Uh, we have folks, you know, one of Jimmy's main jobs is he's out in the field scanning all kinds of different vehicles on a daily basis. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for folks like Jimmy, we wouldn't have all the data and information uh, to, to, to build what we do. Uh, so our coverage, uh, and, and this might be a little, even a little old, there's probably maybe some stuff we've added on, but it, you know, inboard coverage, outboard coverage, you got all your top makes there, Johnson, Evanrude, all the Mercs, uh, Selva, Yamaha, uh, PWC, c -Dews, uh, we can actually do key programming with, uh, with the BRP stuff, uh, inboard motors, uh, Caterpillar, you know, that, you got the big ones there, John Deere, uh, generator sets, industrial engines, MTU, I'm sure you're familiar with all those, Cummins Marine. Uh, MTU, I will say, is a little difficult. Uh, they keep a lot of their stuff locked. Uh, so, but, but we can scan those and we're getting cool codes and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to, to bi-directionals with MTU, they're very, they're very difficult. They keep everything close by. Volvo Penta, we have a great, great stuff. Cummins Marine, Caterpillar, a lot of great information. Very deep diagnostics in, in those areas. But other than that, gentlemen, uh, you want to go to the last page here? That's pretty much it for Texa. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for, uh, for bringing us down here. Uh, it's kind of what we do. Uh, we like to talk about the... Uh, the, the products they're making over in Italy and, and, and kind of you know broaden that reach in the U.S. So so speaking with people like you, I, it is it is fantastic for what we do. So thank you very much. Uh, you you will always have an open line, email, direct line to myself and or Jimmy or anybody in Texas. You can just let them on the the software sure yeah, yeah. if yeah. anybody wants to come up and yeah. take a look and yeah take a look yeah i mean one one thing that's pretty good for you guys i i don't know uh there's a engine engine usage reports that come out of this so those are those are i'm sure very useful for for, for you all uh and i think we might even have some print screens in there uh, screenshots of a uh, yeah, I can Engine show. Report. Yeah. Anybody? Um, and those are printable too. Everything on there is printable. Email. You can save them to your laptop. And I'll also hand out. It's, it, it can range. It can range. But depending on what piece of hardware you get, if you get with that, yeah, you're just getting the whole. With that? The, the whole Encompass package for everything that we offer. You can get a software, if you're going to download it to your own laptop, you can get it well, well under $5,000. Okay. Um, with, with, with this guy, with the Xony Nemo tablet, you're probably, mm -hmm. probably in the six grand, right? So you can get it, you can get it probably, and I'll get you more accurate information. But there's, there's multiple packages. The, 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 the connection interface? The, you're talking about the box? Yeah, the that, guy, that guy by itself is around 1150. Okay, and then, you, then, you got, then you got the software packages on top of that. So the, the, the higher end price would be with, with this guy, because this, this is about three grand, you know, more than that. And also, depending on if, say, you're only working with uh, specific engines, like, say, if you're working at, like, a, a shop that only deals with only Volvo engines, you would only need the one cable if you wanted to do almost every engine, you know, depending on the make and model, certain models have certain cables that you would need. So however you want to mix and match, a lot of the price really has to do with what kind of cables you would want to have, depending on what kind of equipment. Hmm? 
Yeah, you can purchase yeah, those. Yeah, any ones you want. We have, we have essential kits for some of the props and makes and models where you get like, if you, if you buy a marine essential kit, you'll get like 15 to 20% off your table. But if you want to say, hey, I just want to start working on Volvo Penta and some of the Mercs, maybe you buy three or four tables for that. And that would be on one of top of your price. But when I say in that four grand range, that can include a couple tables here and there. For, yeah, if you're doing it on your own computer, so you got you got you know thirteen fifty, eleven fifty, uh, plus some cables. You know, you could be under four thousand actually. Well, if you're going to do everything, if you're going to buy a ton of different cables, but you're not going to buy all the cables at once. You know, you're going to buy them as you need them. There's no reason. Well, we might, yeah. well, survey a boat, so we might be out on a jet boat. Yeah. Because we are being presented in it. Or tomorrow, we might be going on an outboard. And soon after that, we might be going on some of the cables. Yeah, I mean, you could get, I mean, there's there's probably 50 or 60 different cables, you know. So so if you wanted a price on all of those, yeah, we could, we could give you all those. Too. But... You know, most people might just say, hey, I know these are the most popular ones right now. I'll start with this and then add, add it. Add yeah, it. Okay. But of course, to your point, you don't want to be stuck somewhere and then not have it, right? right. So you don't, you don't have like a like a, a diesel package and a gasoline package and an outboard package? Or we do not. We have like a basic package. Uh, yeah, we have, we have like a marine, like an essential kit, which is like the yeah. most popular makes and models. Right. But if you had something like, you know, there, 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 is, there is, there is packages that are cheaper. So like, like you guys originally said, if you're looking to do everything, the packages would probably range from four grand to like two grand, right? Okay. If there are some basic packages where you can get even below, below three grand. You know, but it might it might not have all the coverage. It's more of a limited inboard, a limited outboard. It would have like the most most like popular brands, the most common brands. Right. If and you wanted to just, just have that. Cover MPU and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. With MPU, like I said earlier, is that they're a little tough. We can scan it. You know, we we can scan everything. You're gonna get your codes and stuff. But they're tough with the bi directionals because they I don't. Yeah. And you don't, you might not want to be making, a, you might not want to be making adjustments on this though, no, anyway, right? Not at all. No, but as long as it can point you in the right direction so you know where to go and get it done quickly, then, that, then that's beneficial to you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was beneficial to me.